Hi guys, welcome to a, another video. So the project which I'm sharing with you today is a project that I've never shown on my YouTube channel before. So this is a Greenleaf Sugar Plum dollhouse. I bought this as a kit on eBay, I think in 2019, maybe 2020. And this was when I was first discovering miniatures and dollhouses. So when I put this together, I decided that this is going to be a Christmas cottage and I made some minor modifications on it. So so I did block out the windows from the front of the house and the side of the porch and from the top of the house and what is now going to be the kitchen area. And this was always going to be a Christmas cottage so I did add some vinyls onto the windows in a Christmas theme and I kept this cute little window as a small little seated area. So the reason why I blocked out the windows is because this house doesn't have stairs or anything like that, it's basically a downstairs room and an upstairs room but I wanted somewhere for these imaginary people to go so I added in these stairs and I also added in this corner fireplace which I built up with some foam board and some egg carton to make some stonework as this is a little cottage. For the furniture I made this chair uh, from a pattern I found on Pinterest and this coat hallway hanger was by my design which I built from scratch and I also built this little Christmas themed bed so this is one of the very very first miniatures that I ever made and ever designed and I made this with um, it was chipboard and I believe that those dies that I used there they were a Sizzix die yeah, it is a little bit busted now because it has been in the loft for a few years so it does need some repair work unfortunately but it's, it's still very cute. And I also made this tiny little bedside cabinet and today I'm going to show you how I made this kitchenette space. I did spend a very long time procrastinating over this being a kitchen or a living space or a dining area and eventually I decided on a kitchen. So I didn't record the first half of me building this as I was just kind of doing this on a whim and I was designing it and measuring it as I was going along. So I do hope that you will forgive me for that. But it's basically just a rectangular shape which I added some curves to to fit precisely in this little space that I'm working on. I made these cabinets using my laser cutter and with a laser cutter you always get these very squared off edges so I don't want that on my cabinet so I took an emery board and I filed away the inside of the doors and drawers, the kickboards, the corners of the main cabinets themselves and also on the countertop I smoothed out those ridges there. I don't need my doors or drawers to open inside this project so I'm just doing a faux door and drawer and I glued those into place with some Aliens tacky glue. Next I added a top so that I could hide the join of where I was first designing my countertop and this time around I added some etching so that I could add the look of a draining board. I then used Aliens Tacky Glue to glue this into place. Now that my kitchen is built, I decided to practice a technique which I want to transfer into Professor Okio's kitchen when I get around to that project. And that is to have a brick wall covered in plaster with some exposed bricks. So the first thing that I needed to do was make a template which I put onto copy paper. I transferred that to some 1.5 millimeter mat board. And then my plan is to make the bricks out of some foam. The quickest way for me to make these bricks was to use my foam cutter to cut off a very very thin sheet of this XPS foam. I then glued that with tacky glue and then to save me time measuring out each individual brick, I took a brick stencil which I made for my adult themed dollhouse, which you can find the file to that for free for you to use 
on Cricut Design Space if you have a Cricut. And I use my brayer just to indent the size of those bricks into the foam. I then use my pencil so that I could get more definition. And then I use some tin foil to give me some nice brick texture. For the actual brick colours themselves, I mix together a mixture of these reds, yellows, browns and oranges that you see on my little plate palette here. And then I mix them randomly just to give me some variation in colour. Next I took some brown paint and I randomly painted some bricks in a darker brown. After I liked that pattern, which I just did randomly, I then added some lighter color bricks, and then for even more variation, I painted in some red bricks and mixed in a few of the other colors, just to give me a very natural, random selection of brick colors. After that had dried, I decided to lock in this progress with some matte Mod Podge. Next, I took some white paint and I dry brushed this on to give the bricks a whitewashed look. I wanted to make sure that my bricks were sealed first in case I didn't like this look and then I could just easily remove that white paint. For the mortar, I used some Plaster of Paris and I used a big fluffy paintbrush to brush that Plaster of Paris in between all of my brick shapes. To set the Plaster of Paris, I sprayed on some water, making sure to protect my cardboard to prevent that from warping. Then I added this Pound Shop Polyfiller, which I applied using a palette knife in a random fashion to give me a nice look where it looks like the plaster may have fallen off the wall over time. I left that aside to dry and now I can start painting the kitchen cabinets. I'm going to go for a nice rustic chipped paint effect. So I started with a base coat of my favourite brown colour. I then added a random few patches of this product here, which is a chipping medium. And the reason why I added this is because you can rub away the paints that you put over the top. This is usually used by modelers. However, I find it really useful in dollhouse miniatures ever since I discovered this a few months back. So I randomly applied this to some areas where I thought it may have some natural wear and tear, and also just where I thought it would be pleasing to my eye. So I added it onto the wine rack, the kickboards and some random areas in the cupboards. And I decided to use this beautiful green emulsion paint which is actually supposed to be the paint which I'm going to use for Professor Okio's kitchen. But I thought I'm making this kitchen cabinet now, I want to see how it looks so I'm just going to use the same colour, it's absolutely fine and it is beautiful. So once that had dried, I then took some water and a toothbrush and I also used a stiff paintbrush and I started to rub away that top layer of the emulsion that was sitting on top of that chipping medium. It really doesn't take very much to remove that top layer of paint and the emulsion is water-based, which made it even easier. I did pay particular attention to where the feet would touch the kickboard where you were stood at the sink and areas like the wine rack for taking the bottles of wine on and off or on the shelves where you'd be pulling out plates or whatever it is that was stored there. I masked off the top part of this kitchen counter and then I sealed everything in with a gloss varnish. Sticking with a cosy, rustic kind of vibe, I decided to make my countertops wooden. So for this, I gave it a couple of layers of watered down burnt umber acrylic paint, followed by a couple of layers of walnut varnish. The 
Now it's time for me to create the tap. So to do this, I first of all took some copper wire, which I bent around a Sharpie, and then I'm using some eyelets as the details on the tap. For the part where the water comes from, I took some flush cutters to move away the lip that we get on brads. I glued this into place using some gel super glue. For the base of the tap, I'm using some polystyrene sheets which I rounded the corners off of. I'm using a toothpick as the basis of my taps and I use two more of the brads as the base of the tap and then some jewellery findings for the handle. I glued everything into place using super glue and once everything had cured, I took them outside and I gave them a coating of some black primer. Once that was dry, I painted them in a brass colour acrylic paint and then once that had dried, I used a blue turquoise colour to act as the patina that you might find on a brass tap. I also gave the same paint treatment to some of the eyelets to act as the plug hole and as the drainer and I very nearly forgot to mention the actual sink. So to make the sink I'm actually using a ketchup pot from a McDonald's meal. Our cupboards and drawers need some pulls, so to make those, I'm using some googly eyes, which I cut in half, I primed those, and then I gave those a coat of that same brass acrylic paint. Once that had dried, to dirty them down a little bit, I added some watered down black acrylic paint. Now you may have noticed that my kitchen does not have an oven so we do need somewhere where we can cook food so I'm adding this hob top. To do that I used some of the same wood as I made the kitchen cabinets with. I painted that black and I gave it a coat of gloss varnish to make it look like an induction top hob or maybe an electric top hob. I'm not gluing this into place because I might not always want to have pans on display and sometimes I might want a larger food display. I needed somewhere to hang tea towels so I decided to make a tea towel rack using a toothpick and these random shapes which I cut out on my laser cutter. I gave those a coat of the same brown umber as I painted my cabinets in and I glued them down with tacky glue. Next I needed to make some shelves for me to put some pans on and to make those I'm using some balsa wood. I used the actual wall itself as my template and I cut that down to size and then I wanted these shelves to look a, a little rustic. So I'm using my craft knife and I'm using the end of this steel brush to really indent in some grooves and make them look like they've been made out of a solid plank of wood or a scaffold board. I then painted those in that very same burnt umber paint followed by the walnut varnish. Then I wanted to add some heavy steel shelf brackets so I used some of that same polystyrene plastic which I cut down to a thickness that I liked. To warm it up I used my heat gun and I formed that around the shelf to get the perfect fit. I did decide afterwards to cut off the back parts of these brackets as it did hold the shelf too far out from the wall itself. I then painted them in a black colour and I gave them a dry brush in of some gun metal. Then to attach the shelves to the walls, I inserted some toothpicks so that it would give me some extra support because I know that if I was to only use the glue, that would not hold the weight of the items once I put them onto the shelf. And that brings us to the end of the video. So as always, thank you so much for spending your time with me today. I really do hope that you enjoyed the video. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button, maybe even the notification bell. And at the very least, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a little thumbs up. And I shall see you all real soon. Bye.